How do underwater volcanoes even work? Doesn't the magma they spew instantly solidify into rock due to the water from the sea? Things are a bit more complex than that, as there's pressure, igneous rocks, and subduction. Even scientists aren't entirely sure how many of these processes actually work. Welcome to Matter, and today we'll explain how an underwater volcano in Antarctica triggered 85,000 earthquakes. Things happened back in 2020. An underwater volcano had risen from the depths of the sea and suddenly became active, causing the most sudden chain of earthquakes. And when we say chain, we're talking about a mind-blowing swarm of 85,000 earthquakes. Wait, how did the continent survive so many earthquakes at the same time? That must have been catastrophic for any part of the world. In many parts of the world, just one earthquake can be catastrophic. Look at the Valdivia earthquake in Chile, for example. The swarm of earthquakes didn't happen in one day, though. The swarm started in August of 2020 and had practically stopped by November of 2020. It happened around the Orca Seamount, an inactive volcano that rises 2,950 feet from the seafloor in the Bransfield Strait, a narrow passage located between the South Shetland Islands and the northwestern point of Antarctica. And nope, despite the name, the Orca Seamount isn't shaped like an orca, but orcas do live nearby. The Orca Seamount is inactive, but it's been theorized that its most recent volcanic activity wasn't that long ago due to the temperature anomalies that occurred in the seawater surrounding the seamount. There have been living microorganisms, extremophiles, that live around the seamount. And curious as that is, it's the strongest earthquake activity ever recorded in Antarctica. The region holds the Phoenix tectonic plate, with a study from 2018 confirming that this plate has been digging beneath Antarctica's continental plate. The Phoenix tectonic plate's movement has created a network of fault zones, stretching throughout the crust and opening further rifts in other areas of the icy continent. When a tectonic plate slides underneath a continental plate, a trench slowly starts to form. This is a process known as subduction, which leads to increased volcanic activity. Subduction is a geological process where the lithosphere of a tectonic plate converges with the lithosphere of another, causing the second plate to sink under Earth's mantle. For example, the plates of Japan, Indonesia, and the Aleutian Islands are under subduction. A seismologist at the GFZ German Research Center of Geosciences in Potsdam stated that there were similar volcanic intrusions in other areas of the planet, but this is the very first time that it's been observed in Antarctica, as these processes tend to happen amongst geologic timescales instead of, you know, a couple of months at best. Scientists feel both surprised intrigued and fearful of the possibilities this might propose for science. When two continental plates collide, on the other hand, rocks start to pile up and create towering mountain ranges. For example, the Appalachian Mountains were created this way, and this phenomenon causes the Himalayas to rise. It's possible that the volcano appeared in the Orca Seamount precisely because of the collision of the continental plates. Why were the earthquakes caused, however? Scientists have theorized that the earthquakes were initiated by a finger of hot magma. Another group of published studies mentions how it's possible that the earthquakes were caused by a phenomenon known as a magmatic intrusion. Magmatic intrusion happens when a body of igneous rock crystallizes into solid rock. The first scientists to witness the earthquake chain were the scientists located at the research stations on King George Island, with word of them reaching seismologists at GFZ Research Center. The strength of the rumbling was powerful enough to move the ground on King George Island around 4.3 inches. What causes magma bursts through the seafloor has been a heated debate in geology, 
with the most widely accepted theory being that pressure from underneath builds up until the magma is forced through the seafloor. It could be caused due to mid-ocean ridges. Nope, they don't look like the ridges you imagine. Mid-ocean ridges are formed in the external area of tectonic plates, and they can be as long as 40,000 miles into the planet's seafloor. In fact, the seafloor is formed because of the mid-ocean ridges as lava erupts from the center of these seams and cools down due to water pressure. Tectonic plates are also formed at the ridges and destroyed miles away as they are forced under land masses and melted back into the magma. Whether it's the magma or the tectonic plates that trigger the possible underwater eruption, scientists still don't have the true answer. Of course, the scientists weren't in the middle of the earthquakes when they happened. King George Island is remote and only has a couple of seismic stations nearby. So the seismologists had to find their data from those stations and a couple of ground stations used for the global satellite navigation system. You might be wondering how these stations work if they are remote in one of the most remote continents in the world. They were powerful enough to detect the tiniest of earthquakes. On the other hand, more distant stations employ better equipment for describing the earthquake swarm. Just imagine having the ability to produce a report of an earthquake swarm. Talk about cutting edge technology. Extra data was compounded from the seismic stations and satellites circling Earth that use radar technology to quantify the moving ground. After November 2020 was over with the final magnitude 6.0 quake, the earthquakes all dwindled. They only moved the ground around 4.3 inches. Yep, that's right. A swarm of nearly 100,000 earthquakes only contributed to 4.3 inches of movement in the island. And to add insult to injury, only 4% of the movement was directly linked with the earthquakes. What really moved King George Island was possibly the movement of the magma underneath. Scientists theorized that the strongest earthquake triggered fractures that reduced the pressure of the mid-ocean ridge, causing magma to seep through and induce the sudden displacement. The only bad thing is that until scientists have enough technology to dive to the sea floor and come back without harm, we won't know what the underwater volcano looks like or have the answer of if it caused the earthquake swarm or not. There's no evidence for an eruption, but you have to admit that the idea of an underwater volcano in the coldest place in the world triggering a swarm of earthquakes is mind-blowing. Don't forget to subscribe to Matter to learn more about other scientific phenomena. We hope you enjoyed this video and make sure to watch our other ones on space.